Hello everyone and thank you for being here. My name is Mahbube and it's my pleasure to talk about electrospinning process. Electrospinning is a method to produce nanofibers and now you will learn more about it. One way to go from conventional um, method of fiber fabrication to modern one is electrospinning. So in this presentation, I will show you some slides explaining electrospinning, including facts about electrospinning, why electrospinning, how is the electrospinning set up, what are the working principles of this method, and which one are the most important electrospinning parameters and plus some examples for these parameters. And in the second section of this presentation, I will show you some slides about application of electrospinning for energy storage um, devices, especially redox flow batteries and how to make a nice electrode for, by using this method. There is an increased amount of scientific and industrial interest in electrospinning due to its versatility, cost efficiency, and potential to be used in a wide range of applications. For example, the statistic related to the published journal articles has been increased exponentially since 1997. And also the amount of papers dealing with energy applications of electrospun nanomaterials are increased, as you can see. Electrospinning is a cost-effective method to produce novel nanofibers with unique properties such as small diameter, high surface area, high adjustable porosity, and a small fiber to fiber distance. These properties make them useful for several applications because electrospinning process is a flexible method and you can use variety of different polymers and materials. It has a low startup cost and it is compatible with other pre and post treatment methods. To fulfill the high demand for novel products in various applications, scientists and researchers from all over the world have developed different fiber morphologies, including aligned fibers, blended fibers, core shell fibers, porous fibers, beaded fibers, hollow fibers, side by side, pattern and here in this slide you can see the different morphologies that all of them are produced by using electrospinning. Apart from fiber morphology, it is possible to fabricate different 3D constructs using electrospinning. For example, 3D channels with internal roads, pattern mat patches or uh, some tubes with desired size and also sponges with desired shape and sizes. Now it is time to see how this electrospinning can make fibers. It is mainly comprised of four parts including a high voltage power supply here, a polymer reservoir that can maintain a constant flow rate of solution and usually a syringe pump is used to do that, a conductive spinneret as polymer source connected to the high voltage and also a conductive substrate normally grounded as you can see that is a collector for collection of these electrospoon fibers. This slide shows how electrospinning works. At first, 
The polymer solution is placed into a syringe and then it is pushed to the tip of a spinneret by external pumping to generate a flow of the solution in the syringe. When a droplet is formed, here you can see the droplet, when the droplet is formed at the spinneret, an electrical voltage is applied between the tip of this spinneret and a collector placed in front of it. The solvent quickly evaporates from the jet and solid nanofibers are finally deposited on the collector. Here is the droplet and fibers. However, there are many forces associated with electrospinning and they act on the solution during electrospinning. These forces include pressure force caused by the syringe pump to draw out the solution, viscoelastic force from the solution's resistance to movement, surface tension force from the cohesion of the solvent molecules keeping the solution together, repulsive columbic force from the applied voltage stretching out the solution, electrical force from the electrical field providing the solution with acceleration towards the collector, and finally air drag and gravitation force from the environment. When the intensity of the electrical field attains a certain critical value, the electrostatic forces overcome the surface tension of the polymer solution and force the ejection of the liquid jet, here is the jet, from the tip of the Taylor cone and electrospinning start. In order to achieve the desired fiber diameter, bead free fibers as well as a porous and uniform fibrous mat, optimization of the electrospinning parameters is necessary. These electrospinning parameters include three main groups of solution parameters, process parameters, and ambient parameters. For example, solution parameters include the solubility, solution concentration, viscosity, compatibility of the additive that you add, conductivity of the solution, surface tension, and etc. Process parameters include the distance between the tip and collector, applied voltage, feed rate, a spinneret shape and needle, and relative humidity, temperature, and airflow are examples of ambient parameters. I have to mention here that all of these parameters are extremely important and they have to be adjusted carefully if you want to have a successful electrospinning. Electrospinning may seem simple, but the theory behind it is complicated, and therefore there are many independent and dependent variables that should be taken into account. Independent parameters such as solution concentration, applied voltage and etc. can be adjusted and controlled individually. But dependent parameters such as lifetime of the jet depends on these independent parameters. This is complicated and you need to do a lot of work in the lab to understand how this work for different solution and different materials. For example, one of the important parameters is solution concentration that can affect the electrospinability, bead formation and fiber diameter. As you can see here, 
by increasing the solution concentration, chain entanglements increase, which is important for fiber fabrication. This is an example when you have change of morphology from beaded fibers to fibers by increasing the concentration. But I have to mention that in this matter, viscosity, polymer concentration and polymer molecular weight are all connected to each other and you have to take care of all of these parameters together. Another important factor is choosing a right solvent. Right solvent should completely dissolve the polymer in high concentration. It should have a moderate boiling point and the solvent can affect the electrospinning in different manners. For example, you can understand how continuous is your electrospinning by choosing the right solvent. What is the solution concentration? What kind of fiber morphology you will have? And what is the fiber diameter? For example, you can see here different fiber morphologies when PCL polymer is dissolved in different solvent systems. As I mentioned earlier, we will have some slides showing energy applications of electrospinning method. The electrospoon nanofibers and the composites are used in various electrochemical energy storage systems such as lithium ion batteries, lithium sulfur batteries, sodium and potassium ion batteries, supercapacitors, and etc. Electrospinning can be used to fabric nanofibers that are employed as electrode for redox flow batteries, as you can see here. Here is the sketch of different electrospoon fibers that are fabricated by different researchers and all of them, they have potential to be used as um, electrode. For example, this fibrous morphology can be solid polymeric fibers, solid oxide fibers, or a composite of carbon fibers, or um, polymeric fibers with some conductive additives, or porous carbon fibers, or some composite carbon fibers with different additives that these additives can be conductive or non-conductive depending on the performance that you need to get from these electrodes. Now I will show you the work that we did in our group. The polymer solution is made of polyacrylonitrile or PAN. PAN is a rich carbon source. After making the solution, this solution is going through the in situ electrospinning, fibers are produced, and after electrospinning, they go uh, under a thermal heating as post treatment to further enhance their electrochemical performance by um, changing these uh, polymeric fibers to carbon fibers. The carbonization, it's called carbonization. It is done under a nitrogen flow at high temperature and um, to make these nanofibers. After carbonization, you can see the change of the color from white for the polymeric fibers to black to carbon fibers. And also there is a decrease in the fiber diameter, but in both cases, we have a freestanding 3D fibrous network here. You can use various electrochemical based characterizations to analyze these fabricated electrospoon fibers and you can compare their electrochemical performance with commercial felt. For example, here we compare the electrochemical performance of electrospoon fibers 
ES with uh, the untreated commercial felt and heat treated commercial felt in uh, a three electrode cyclic voltammetry setup for positive and negative reaction. As you can see here, the electrospoon fibers, the blue graph, they have a good electrochemical behavior. You can see the oxidation and reduction P, especially when they are compared to untreated uh, commercial felt, felt and also they show uh, comparable behaviors when they are um, compared with um, heat treated commercial felt. The battery test confirms exactly the same result, especially when the current density is low, the behavior of the electrospin fibers is very good. If you are interested to know how to operate the electrospinning device that we have in our lab, please click here to have access to the manual of the device. And if you have any question regarding electrospinning, please contact me via my email address. Thank you for your attention and wish you all healthy days ahead.